Okay, so Sam, if you were sitting in this meeting with Yossi and Barack Obama, and you heard what Yossi said to the president, would you agree or disagree? My and if you disagreed briefly, yes. what would you tell the president to do well, during the course of the next year? Most of the times I agree with Yossi, but not for the provisional state or for accepting the uh, 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 occupation. What I will tell Mr. Obama that I have, you are talking about territory and security. We have it in our book, the Geneva Initiative there, the border and the security. Let us implement it. And then we will go for the other issue later on. You have it there. The role of the United States of America, I mean, I'm glad that you see agreed with me that this coalition is an obstacle for getting anywhere. But the role of the United States of America as a leading role for the whole for the international community, I'm afraid it's, it's, it's still now it's, it's backward, you know, because of their <coughs> what is happening here. You need to strike a deal to say this is a bridging gap between the Palestinians and Israelis. Everybody knows where will the solution will be. It's everybody discussed it, everybody knows, even you in the State Department, in the White House, in uh, the Israeli cabinet, in the Knesset, in the Arab board, and add to it the Arab Peace Initiative as well, because none of people are mentioning that. It is a, a great tool to start with this accompanied with the territory and security that the president is asking for that to start with. They are there. Please do your best in order to implement those. Because immediately, if we accept it, so our people will know their destination. They know that this state will be within that shape. Then it will be easy for us to go step by step for the evacuation to take place, for us to uh, 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 make our institution take over those places. It will take time. We know that it will take time. So don't waste time for us to agree in order to later on to implement this while at the same time you're building settlement, you're confiscating land, you're changing uh, facts on the ground that will be impossible to define in the future. Time is running out. We need a full decision from the United States and the Quartet to be engaged fully within this process, and we have it there. Don't waste time, that's okay. what I'll tell you. The powers have reminded me that we uh, are rapidly running out of this phase of the, of the program, but I want to ask one final question. And it has to do with leadership. And I, um, I say this because I, I, I really do believe that that's the key to just about everything. I mean, between 1930 and 1950, six men, they happen to be men, were responsible for most of the death, destruction, devastation, and hope for security and prosperity of much of the Western world. Six individuals. For those people who don't believe that individuals count in life. Individuals count big time. And in this conflict, every time there's been a breakthrough, without exception, there have been, again, largely men, willing and able to take risks. So I ask you the question, and uh, we don't need a long and elaborate answer. Um, I, I know my view of the answer. Do you believe, right now, in any conceivable political constellation that you can imagine in the next several years that you will have on the Israeli side a prime minister willing and able to do what is necessary to pay the price, as you yourself described, and a Palestinian leader willing and able to unify his movement and to pay the price, and an American mediator willing and able to be tough, fair, and reassuring, something we haven't seen since the first Bush administration. Do you believe that in the next several years, each of you, such a collection of leaders is possible? I would ask for a simple yes or no. I may yes. have to, actually. Yes, I can. I can Kate, uh, otherwise, Kate <clears throat> will never invite me back. I can, I can tell you from our side, we do have the president right now. 
he is there, President Mahmoud Abbas, he's strong enough to take this ahead. He's there, he have a prime minister that is working for building the institution, creating the facts on for creating a state that will be part of the international community, that we will be within that international community. Take a, 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 a real you know, chance for this and do it. It's the problem on the Israeli side as far as we see. Okay, let, let Yossi speak for that side. Yossi? Well, uh, first I believe that uh, after Abu Mazen, there will be no Abu Mazen. I think that Abu Mazen is, is undoubtedly a, a, an opportunity to, to make peace with. So we don't uh, argue about, uh, about this. What I can tell you is the following thing. It might be very difficult, if not impossible, to have three leaders in the same time wishing for peace and acting for peace. My belief is that it might be enough to have one of these triangular who is, as we say in English, meshuginer enough, crazy enough to fight like hell, one of them. It doesn't have to be an Ameri the American president or the Israeli or the Palestinian. Somebody who is not afraid of anybody, who is saying this is the, the fight of my life and I will do whatever needed. Something like what happened with Sadat in, in uh, 77. I'm going to the Knesset, come what's come. I mean, it's okay, I'll, I'll fight, I'll find a solution. And this is enough, and this is why I'm not pessimistic. Because as much as I do not believe that the three of them will be the, the crazy people who will fight the, the, the fight for life uh, in order to have peace, I cannot believe that we will not be in, we will not see in the coming years one of them who is ready to fight. Very well said, you see. Thank you for your patience. Um, we now have 10 minutes or so for your questions. Please identify yourself, and remember, this is not station identification. This is a, this is a question. Yes, the gentleman in the, yes. Uh-huh. Dennis Fox. Uh, president of the Client Development Institute. Uh, I loved the moderation, except I had one piece, which was why you start off trying to talk about what the other person wants the other one to do. Can we hear, just in the crazy Meshuggan way, what you both have in common that you would fight for between the two of you? To start with that would be a great way for my day to go. Anybody else agree with me on that? Yeah. I'm just curious. I'd like to hear what you both have in common. We are always hearing what it is that the other side has to do. What do you have in common that could start peace here, and then you take it up to that crazy man that's going to be one of the three? Give us a little leadership on that, and I can moderate the next discussion. <laughs> that's a well, long have, and elaborate question, you, but or answer. You have a document with you. I mean, you can read Geneva it and look agreement. at it. The Geneva Agreement is there. That's what we have in I'm common. If Yossi Bailin will be the Prime Minister of Israel next term, <laughs> then we will not waste one single minute to, from striking a deal with him. Very well said. Uh, next question. Yeah, the gentleman there. All right, I, I can't see, but yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Oda Aberdeen, Aaron, my question is to you. Suppose tomorrow, Obama calls you and he says, you know, Dennis Ross is leaving, you're going to take his place. What would you tell Obama to do in the next 10 months? I don't, I mean, I, I, will, I will give you the politically incorrect answer to this question. Uh, uh, as an American, as an American who actually cares about Arab-Israeli peace, I, I would um, tell the president to do almost nothing that would risk um, what are already imperiled prospects for his reelection. Because, and again, I have great disappointments with many of the things that he's done. But those who have a strategic investment in this particular issue, and I'm not a part of his campaign, 
let matters fall where they may next November. Let the American public decide what they want, who they want to govern them. But if you want a peace process, if you want an American president that has a commitment to it, who has made serious tactical mistakes over the course of the last almost three years, notwithstanding, then don't imperil and jeopardize his prospects for reelection. And the notion that Israelis and Palestinians would come to Washington now, at this moment, and ask this man for things he cannot possibly do, to me is, it, it doesn't compute. Israelis and Palestinians, many whine about the absence of American influence, the absence of American involvement at a time when no American president is going to take this on. So in my judgment, do what you can. Keep Israeli-Palestinian relations in Gaza quiet. Keep the Israeli-Egyptian relationship headed in the right direction. Do what you can to promote Israeli-Palestinian security cooperation, whatever economic assistance you could provide. Keep the hope of a two-state solution alive, but do not, under any circumstances, risk what's left of your personal credibility on some fantastical pursuit of a permanent status agreement. That's what I'd recommend. I see Judith down here, Judith Kipper. I want to talk about reality. There are a lot of people uh, here elsewhere in your region, Tammy and Yossi, uh, that, uh, who have been in this uh, game for a very long time, smart, strategic, uh, friends of all of ours, et cetera, who believe the two-state solution is over. In your opinion, how will we know if and when there is no longer a possibility of two states? Because both peoples are staying put. And many people believe that there's five seconds or five minutes left for a two-state solution, and the other two choices are continued occupation, which becomes apartheid, or a binational state. Two of the three are totally unacceptable to both parties. So how do we know or how do we preserve the possibility of a two-state solution, and how might we know if you think a time may come when it, that's, it, it's transcended to something else. Who wants to go first? Mm. <laughs> Sammy? Well, all three options that you mentioned that really difficult for us to understand. Ah, the, all options that you mentioned is very difficult. It's the two-state solution is our preference. Number one, number two, number three. It's two-state solution. Now, if the other side will deny this for us, if the international community will not stand beside us in order to accomplish that, then we will ask for a free election within one state. And we will see democracy, let democracy play its role. 